Hello everyone, my name is Roger Fari and I would like to welcome you to another video. In this video, we are going to continue our ethical conversation around data modeling. In this very video, we are going to focus on the clustering model and understand different aspects of this model from an ethical perspective. All right, let's get this now. So uh, clustering, just a quick recap, is basically um, grouping data objects based on the attributes. And these grouping of the data objects are done in such a way that the data objects in the same group are more similar to data objects in the other groups. And the data objects in the other groups are different from one another. So we find these groups to sort of like fulfill these two uh, goals. And the clustering model happens or like is based on the attributes that your data is being presented with. And, you know, different algorithms work in different ways, but the uh, core of the matter is that data objects, similarity and dissimilarity are gauged by the numbers or the values in these attributes, okay? So that's a quick recap of clustering. But let's take an example here and use this example to showcase how clustering analysis uh, may have ethical dimensions and perspectives to it. So uh, here we're looking at the example of U.S. counties clustering analysis, right? So we've got 3,007 uh, counties in different states. So these are our data objects, right? So these are in different states. And uh, based on these attributes, population, higher ed, per, pro, poverty percentage, main, median home income, unemployment rate, um, median home income percent of the state total, mean partisanism, and uh, slope of partisanism. Um, you know, these are attributes that we're going to include in this clustering. But before we continue, let me talk a little bit about these two attributes. Uh, so these two attributes are, um, you know, features that are extracted from the 20 years of election data. And based on uh, how the county voted for the Democrats or Republican, if a county voted um, you know, more often for uh, Republicans, their value is positive. And if the county voted more often for the uh, Democrats, their value is negative. Similarly, the slow partisanism is based on the slope of the change uh, these counties voting for Republican or uh, Democrat. So basically, if a county vo voted more and more, um, you know, Republican, you know, in the, in, in, in the, you know, 20 years ago, they voted you know, a little bit towards Republican. It was like 50%, 45%. And then uh, in over the years, they came to 80% to 20%. And uh, then their slope is uh, positive. So, uh, long story short, based on these attributes, you want to do clustering analysis. And once we do this, we get something like this. You know, we've got five clusters and these clusters form these relationships. And then you could sort of see, um, you know, why these clusters are formed by looking at their values. For instance, you have this mean partisanism, right? You know, this cluster, these two clusters are... Uh, Democrats and these two clusters are Republican, these three clusters. And you can see that most of the clusters um, are, um, you know, moving towards becoming more Republican, except for this cluster three. But, you know, the point is not for us to analyze the result of this cluster. The point is for us to look at it from the, the ethical perspective, right? So uh, let's come back to our a general model theory. Um, you know, we every model, such as clustering model, has a mapping, reduction, and pragmatism. So what is the mapping, reduction, and pragmatism in this case? Before we talk about that, let me uh, bring your attention to the fact that clustering analysis, um, you know, ethical perspective, ethical dimension, is very similar to nominal attributes. Why? The reason is, um, you know, what is clustering? At the end of the day, once your clustering is all and done, every county is going to have a 
cluster membership, right? So you've got the cluster membership. Right? I mean, cluster one, zero, one, I mean, two, three, four, one. I mean, the point is not for me to be accurate here. Is for the point here is for me to say cluster membership is basically uh, using the model, using everything in the model, the attributes to come to one nominal attribute, right? I mean, we are representing these with one, zero. I mean, these are numbers, but they represent the name of these clusters, right? So whatever we discuss as nominal attributes, ethical dimensions, um, we also can see them here as well because we're basically summarizing the whole counties and reducing everything into one nominal attribute. And this nominal attribute is going to be you know, used for decision making. So everything we had for nominal attribute also um, apply here. So let's talk about those three elements of general model theory. We've got mapping, what are, what are we mapping? We're mapping the counties. And what is it that we are reducing the counties based on this model? We are saying that the only thing that matters uh, for sort of like, you know, these counties, about these counties, is the attributes that we have decided to include in this model, right? You know, the other attributes or anything that we can't measure or anything that we haven't measured or anything that we don't have access, um, you know, regardless of the reason, what is going to matter for the you know value of these nominal attributes we're going to achieve or get from this uh, model uh, are those attributes are included so that's the reduction uh, reduction part and the pragmatism is that we can understand the trends the patterns among these uh, counties and see what counties are more similar and different and we can see if there are inherent uh, patterns in the data that show us meaningful grouping, right? So this is the pragmatism part of a clustering model. So let us go over these, um, you know, dimensions of ethical modeling, like always awareness that model is not the reality uh, is very important. And then we wanna make sure that the implicit assumptions are explicit. Some of the implicit assumptions here are, for instance, you know, as we said, the only aspects of the counties that are more important are these attributes. Another one is that if we were to include other attributes for any reason that we didn't, we could have, it could be out of ignorance or ignorance, it could be because we don't have access, it could be because we can't measure them or whatever it is the reason, um, when we don't include those attributes, the assumption is, uh, you know, inclusion of those attributes will not change our decision significantly um, and it's not going to create fairness issues, equity issues. Uh, for the people or for the things that we're going to make decisions about, right? So that's another implicit assumption about clustering models. This is actually a very important assumption because, you know, you have to pay attention. You know, the clustering is going to be based on the attributes you're going to be using for, uh, you know, the clustering model. I mean, those values are just going to be based on those attributes. So if you fail to include something that is relevant, uh, that is a very important thing and that can be you know, caused by different reasons as I mentioned them. And then another ass assumption is, you know, each attribute should have the same influence in drawing the clusters, right? Uh, I mean, that is actually if you have done the clustering correctly, which means that you've got you've done this the normalization of your data. But even even after the normalization, the assumption is each of these attributes should have the same weight on these the result of these clusters. So. Another dimension is we want to list these assumptions uh, for being able to communicate up the ch chain of command to whoever is going to use the result for decision making. And also we wanted to use them for cost benefit analysis that we will see uh, in this very video, right? Uh, cost of assumption. We want to be able to be clear about what is the cost of these assumptions we are making, all right? So for instance, the cost of assumptions for the first uh, assumption the only important aspect of counties are the ones included in this data set is that the other aspect of county such as history such as you know geography will be overshadowed they're not going to be important uh, the cost of the other assumption uh, include inclusion of other possible aspects will not help in regard with the usefulness of the model which is you know we want to use it for some decision making um, you know the cost could be uh, 
if we had included another attribute, we may have been able, we may have inadvertently um, favor some people over the other. I mean, the exclusion of one attribute or inclusion of one. So it becomes very delicate. And it depends on how we are going to, it depends on how is it that we're going to use the results of this clustering. Uh, and each attribute have the same influence in drawing the clustering. Of course, that's the case if we have done the normalization of the data. And, uh, you know, it might be the case for a specific project to prove a specific usage of this model, we might actually want to change those um, weights. We might want to say, okay, one attribute should be more important than the, the, the other attribute. So uh, that implicit assumptions um, could should be explicit. So in, in the case that we actually need those changes, we are able to make them because those are explicit. Uh, we want to also be clear about how we are going to be using the model and uh, how that's going to be useful. Uh, in this case, by understanding the demographic um, and you know, sort of like seeing the trends, uh, this could help us for businesses and the government to make better decisions, right? And also for the election purposes. These types of analysis is very useful for the election purposes. So cost-benefit analysis, of course, we have talked a little bit about the costs so far. For instance, um, it could be the case that by inclusion or exclusion of the attributes or the weights of these um, attributes that we have used, some counties might get more, uh, you know, benefits, you know, you know, federal benefits or things like that. And that's a cost because, you know, we are using this you know, sophisticated model to basically draw a line, put a line and who should get what. I mean, if you're using clustering for that purpose, right? So that could be the cost. Another cost is that, of course, this model is subject to abusing and uh, misusing. The benefits, you can create more effective federal and state regulations, and also, uh, also could be, it could provide better and more customized value for business, uh, because, you know, a national business knows more about a county so they customize their services for this specific county or any any other counties now, another thing is you know election campaign can optimize their ad spending to maximize winning based on where they should put um you know their their resources for maximizing the outcome which is the election i didn't know if i should put this as advantage or disadvantage certainly um you know our democratic system work by giving opportunity for the candidates to be able to make the case and they need to actually be able to maximize this but at the same time um, you know is this right to sort of maximize the election outcome and you know some people just because they are already Democrat they are not going to uh, sort of like be represented in the country so this is something that I don't really know if it's cost or benefit this is certainly the way um, the democracy works in the u.s so i haven't decided I, I wasn't able to decide if this is a cost or benefit this is just the way it is um, and lastly we want to talk about that you know as we also mentioned the cost benefit analysis is that all models are subject to misusing abusing and um, we want to see how right so in this case Example of a misuse could be, um, you know, us not including uh, the relevant attributes. I mean, there are the relevant attributes that uh, could have actually made the end decision making better. We just fail to include them, or we fail to standardize or normalize our, our model. So these are uh, examples of actually misusing the model, and you can see that because the model is more complex the example of misuse are more technical. Um, if someone actually intentionally excluded an attribute that is relevant or included that attribute that is irrelevant to gain some advantage for the constituents or for you know personal gain, then that would become a case of abusing. I was not able to think of a case of overusing for clustering analysis. And the reason is, um, you know, you have to use the clustering um, in a correct way. You have to use the relevant attributes, right? If you are using the relevant attributes and you've done the clustering correctly and using the, the 
right way, then it's not overusing. And you know, if you actually know this tool, um, it's very hard to imagine of it, you know, overusing it. So if you are overusing it, it's probably because you are, you haven't crafted the model in the uh, specific uh, way that should be. So I was not able to think of a meaningful overusing example. Uh, if you have, please leave a comment or let me know uh, using an email so I can also understand it. Lastly, uh, we want to talk about how it could be an example of abuse. For instance, uh, if we use the result of the clustering uh, to provide federal support only to the states that uh, would strengthen the power of the president or the power of the legislative um, you know, branches, the Congress to, to keep the power, then this would also be an example of uh, abusing.